Hi, my name's Ian Leslie and welcome to Intro. Intro is all about introducing some of the biggest and best acts, DJs, promoters, whether you're an up-and-coming singer-songwriter, whether you're a band, whether you're a comedian, whether you're an actor, we are looking for you to get you on the show so you can showcase your music and we can introduce you to the UK and hopefully worldwide as well. Now, on today's show, we have got Vince Kidd, who is earlier this year on The Voice. We've got Ryan Gabaloni, who is an up-and-coming singer-songwriter. And we've also got Jade Richards, who last year was on The X Factor. They're all going to be performing live on the show for you tonight. So, without further ado, we might as well get our first guest on. All right, introducing Ryan Gabaloni. <laughs> Myself forget, turn over the page. But in this book I hold so close, pages are all the same. And all the thoughts inside my head, remembering things I should have said. Can fix it now, no way, no how. Can fix it now, no way, no how. It's already gone I'm Puzzling myself about where I went wrong Picking up the pieces Of what was once our lives And all the thoughts inside my head Remembering things that I should have said Can fix it now, no way, no how Can fix it now, no way, no how Started out in different places, different lives, different faces. We became one, and then I knew I wanted no one else but you. With all the thoughts inside my head, remembering things that I should have said. Can fix it now, no way, no how. Can fix it now, no way, no how. Days pass by, and all that's left are memories. The way you show me how to be, taught me right from wrong. So what is life and what is love? How do we know it's real? Could we have been dreaming all along? And all the thoughts inside my head. Remembering things that I should have said Can fix it now, no way, no how Can fix it now, no way, no how Could we have been dreaming all along? And that was Ryan Gabaloni with Dreaming All Along, which is his single, which uh, hopefully he's going to tell us more about in a second. So let's cut to the interview. Right, and we're here live with Ryan Gabaloni. Ryan, how are you? Not bad. Thanks very much. Good. Cool. Right, what we're going to do is just ask you a few different questions and stuff uh, about how you are. Do you want to just tell everybody a little bit about you? Well, my name's Ryan Gabaloni. Um, I started playing the guitar about three years ago. Um, started singing as well. I'm self-taught, I learned off YouTube, started off with a, quite a rubbish guitar and then worked my way up. Alright, cool. So, like you said, I mean, you only started three years ago. I mean, from what I've heard and the different styles of music that you tend to play, like when I'm listening on your YouTube channel and things like that, 
you're you're really, really, really good. I mean, you must have put a lot of dedication in to playing the guitar to get as good as you've gotten. Yeah, well, I got re I got quite into it, um, and there was there was times where I was playing the guitar in the morning before I went to school, and then I was coming back from school, and I was picking it back up. I wasn't putting it down until I went to sleep. I was staying up through the night playing my guitar and stuff like that. There was uh, my uncle Bill plays the guitar as well, so I was going down to his house at the weekend. I was staying in, I wasn't going out with my friends. I was just got really into it, and I was just playing and playing and playing. Oh, that's cool. All right, so what are your inspirations? Who are your inspirations to uh, get you to the level that you're at just now? Well, I mean, my main inspiration is my Uncle Bill, um, because obviously he played the guitar around me from a very early age. Uh, I was, he was playing guitar to me when I was a child and stuff like that. I used to always look forward to going around to his house because he played me this one song that was called uh, Universal Soldier. All right. I don't know if you heard it. I've never heard of that. Who's that by? Donovan. All right. Uh, and he used to play that to me all the time, and I just loved it. And I used to try and play it, and he used to he taught me songs on the bottom string and stuff like that. And uh, I just started off playing his guitar, and then eventually I just went bottom one. Did you ever start off by playing things like you, kumbaya and stuff? No, I've never actually you tried imagine to play that. that. But we could easily we can just pitch up a little campfire now and we try if you like. Anybody else can get involved. Right, and uh, when did you know that you wanted to be a musician? I mean, was it a really young early age, or um, wasn't it? Till recently? Or? Well, no, as I said, I just started playing the guitar two or three years ago. Um, obviously, I wasn't expecting when I first bought my first guitar that I was going to enjoy it so much. Yeah. Um, but then I just started really enjoying it and I've just kept going ever since. Oh, that's cool. I mean, what, have, what else have you done to get yourself out there and get yourself known? Well, I've got a YouTube channel. Um, obviously, you just type my name into YouTube and you'll get on my channel. Um, I've done gigs. I've started doing gigs. I've done a couple of gigs now. I've got a couple coming up as well, so... Just trying to get there as much as I can. Oh, really. That's cool. If anybody wants some further bar mitzvah, he's also on. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I mean, some of the gigs and that that you've done that I've seen uh, have been really, really, really good, and you seem to win over your audience. I mean, when you start speaking to people, some people can be like, "Oh, how's he going to sound?" Mm -hmm. But as you'll have everybody will have now heard, uh, you're, you've got a really unique sound, and the songs that you've written, personally, I think are really fantastic. So you so should be really proud of what you've done. Uh, what's next for you and your career? Well, I mean, who knows? Nobody can tell the future. But uh, I'm just going to keep going as as well as I can, get out there as much as I can, do as much gigs as I can, keep going with the videos. You know, anything for publicity is the best way to go. So where do you see yourself in ten years' time? Well, as I've already said, Ian, I can't predict the future, but uh, hopefully just be making a living playing the guitar and writing music and just selling music to fans. That's cool. I mean, uh, one other thing that we did do, we got in touch with a couple of people that uh, were fans of yours uh, and uh, asked them a few different things. And Like, people were telling me little things about you, uh, which they said you were a bit of a poser. How do you want, how do you want to tell people... What they're saying, with them saying, oh, Ryan's a bit of a poser, do you feel that's an untrue statement or do you feel that's a true statement? Depends which way you look at it. Humour me. <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> it depends. Anywhere I see my reflection, I'll tend to take a little picture. So, so we can quite safely say that, for example, that's a good <laughs> depiction uh, of Ryan. Uh, as you can see, he's, he's a bit of a poser. He, I'm really, really enjoying this. I love the green, to be honest. Goes with my eyes, doesn't it? Uh, and I mean, I love how your physique is there because you've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? Because I know that for a fact that you used to be quite a big lad uh, at one point, uh, as you can see. Uh, Somebody woo! got a new phone in. Yep, uh, someone decided to put fat booth on and catch him out. Uh, but you, know, you were a big lad at one point. Big that's lad. good. That's right, so that's Ryan Gavaloni. Make sure that you keep following him, whether you want to do it on Twitter, or Facebook, or his YouTube channel, because we will be seeing massive things coming from him. Ryan, thanks very much for thanks coming in again. Yeah. All right, thank you. To break promises I don't want to hurt you But I need to breathe And at the end of it all You're still my best friend But there's something inside That I need to release 
Which way is right? Which way is wrong? How do I say that I need to move on? You know we're headed separate ways. Feels like I am just too close to love you. There's nothing that I can really say. I can't lie no more. I can't hide no more. Got to be true to myself. And it feels like I am just too close to love you. So I'll be on my way. So I'll be on my way. Be on my way. My way. My way. You're giving me more that I can't return. Yeah, there's so much that you deserve Nothing to say, got nothing to do I've nothing to give, I'm asleep without you You know we're headed separate ways It feels like I am just too close to love you and there's nothing that I can really say. I can't lie no more. I can't hide no more. Got to be true to myself. And it feels like I am just too close to love you. So I'll be on my way. So I'll be on my way. Be on my way. My way. And it feels like I am just too close to love you oh, oh, oh. There's nothing that I can really say I can't lie no more, I can't hide no more Got to be true to myself And it feels like I am just too close to love you So I'll be on my way so I'll be on my way, be on my way, my way, my way, be on my way. And that was Jade Richards with uh, Too Close, her version of the Alex Clare track, which was featured on the Microsoft advert. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to Jade, uh, Jade's interview and see what she said. Right, and here we are with a special guest today. We've got Jade Richards. Jade, how are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Okay, good. How's everything been going for you recently? Really good. Been really lucky. Good. <laughs> <laughs> good, really lucky. One more dancers, fucker, move on. Uh, good. Uh, so everything's been going well. You're looking at uh, new things? Yeah, like, I mean, after X Factor, everything kind of took off for me and I was, I got a lot of work and I was really lucky, like, some really big gigs and everything just kind of took off. That's, that's honestly really, really good. I mean, yeah. when uh, everybody watched your X Factor, it's really good because obviously we're both from the same neck of the woods. Right. Seeing a local girl get out there and do it for us, it gave a lot of people aspirations. Right. Uh, and you're an inspiration to a lot of people, so you should well, be proud of that. You. Definitely be proud of that. Uh, what was it like working on The X Factor, though? I mean, being on there, I presume wh when you got there, got on stage, nerves, for me personally, mm. would have been like, wow. Aye. But I mean, what was it like, like for well, you? Honestly, I've never done anything like that before in my life. Yeah. It's like 3,000 people or something in the SECC, so, but it was, it was like a crash course sort of into the industry. It's all really, really quick. Uh, filming's done a lot quicker than people think it is. Um, You've not got time, it's long hours, so it was like, um, it was basically just like a crash course and if what happens and what you what would happen if that was your lifestyle, if you were touring, if you were like performing every night. Yeah. It, but it was, I really enjoyed it. I th to be fair, I take my heart off to you because, I mean, I have been in situations where I've been up on stage and in mm. front of a crowd of thousands and you're having to quickly try and entertain them quickly be on your feet think ahead about everything that you're uh, doing but especially with singing it's I, like oh. I, think, I think it is quite hard like when we play, when i played at wembley that's like 
Wembley. I mean, well, you don't get better than that. Who's not played there? Me. Uh, but, well, Me. I, but, uh, Definitely not played in Wembley. But like, went on stage and then Gary Barlow was like, "Hi," and I was like, "You're right." Like, it's, I didn't come up <laughs> to say it. I was, it was really nerve wracking. What do you say to Gary Barlow? He's like music royalty. <laughs> Hi, Gary. How are you? All right. I'll take that. Good kids. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, uh, what were the judges like to work with, and what was it like being able to fly over and perform at their homes? Uh, well, I mean, as as what you see on television is like what happens. It's basically just them sort of saying to you like what they think of whatever you've done. So I don't think you work with them properly until it's like um, live shows. Yeah. But uh, they were they're really nice. I mean, like. Louis gets quite a lot of bad stick in the press, but he's actually what, the, probably the nicest guy at the mall. Like. He does, he does seem like that, you know. What uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's a typical quirky Irishman who doesn't live the uh, Irish. Definitely, he's talking down to earth and come and speak to us and mm. telling us, "Ken, you're doing well." Um, Gary Barlow, pff, Gary Barlow, Talisa was really nice as well. She's talking down to earth, like just normal girl. And Kelly Rowland was nice as well. Yeah, that's cool. Um, when we went over to Miami, we were only there <coughs> for like two and a half days, so it's like super quick. Everything was done. Um, but it was it was good. It was an experience, and I mean, first class to Miami, you can't beat it. No, you can't beat. It. Is that <laughs> true? Full English breakfast, double jack diamonds and coke. Felt like it was Motley Crue. <laughs> Motley Crue? Nah, you wouldn't have had the full English breakfast. <laughs> uh, double jack diamonds and coke, on the other hand, <laughs> would have been all over that. Uh, but no, I think that would have been fantastic. I'd have been quite upset though, because I like a bit of a tan. So right. in Miami for two and a half days isn't that much tan time for me, to be honest. But I mean, getting the opportunity to do that though, again. Mm. Fantastic, absolutely amazing. fantastic. What were your like uh, inspirations when you were a kid? When you were growing up, mm. who did you aspire to be like? Even though you obviously want to be, aspire to be your own type of singer, Aye. but I mean, who I were mean, your aspirations when, and stuff when you were we, younger? Um, when I was we, it was Michael Jackson and Kylie Minogue. Yeah, like definitely thought it was Michael Jackson. Used to hide behind curtains, and my gran had to introduce me as Michael Jackson. <laughs> then I'd come out like they are dancing. That's cool. So. I was there when I was younger, and then as I got older, I sort of um, like found my own kind of music. Yeah. Slipknot, Motley Crue, like I'm, I'm not totally. I take my hat off to Motley Crue. Aye, and then as I got not. older again, <laughs> as I got older again, I started listening to jazz music mm. and the blues and stuff. So I think I'm a wee bit a mixed bunch. I take a wee bit of everything. Right, so I mean, obviously, when you were listening to the, the likes of Slipknot, you were a bit of a goth back in the day, I take it. Aye, was ah, I. So, I mean, these would be good depictions of <laughs> how Jade used to look That's actually back not in the too day. Bad. That is a really, really, really good picture, but when you think about it, uh, you used to also go out dressed like this most days. Uh, <laughs> That's, that's Halloween. It's not Halloween. I seen you like this, and it was March. I was like, Jade, what are you doing? That's it's it. I've done that look. makeup myself. It's that's egg, egg really whites and, and toilet roll. That's Hair actually that my really, forehead. really, really good. <laughs> Obviously, some pictures just get better. Uh, do you want to explain this picture? <laughs> I didn't even remember it. I presume it's called Peggy. Well, I think it was trying to do the world, the Guinness Book of Records. I wanted to break. How many pegs you can put on your face? Aye. Okay. How many did you get? Are they can? Do you want to, I could count them, but uh, 1, count? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I've done more than that. If I had pegs right now, I'd show you. But we don't have pegs, and that's the reason why. <laughs> anyway, right, so they were your aspirations as right. a kid. Who are more of your aspirations these days, though? I mean, who um, do you like see? Amy Winehouse. Um, Eminem. It's totally weird, because I don't know, obviously rap, but... He's like my hero. I mean, you look at Eminem, you look at his work and how and he started he's done, off. Aye. Like it's a total underground, like yeah. came through nothing and look, and he's amazing now. Mm -hmm. um, that, like I don't know, really listen to a lot of modern music if I'm honest. It's more old bands I'm into and stuff. So yeah, that's cool. Well, there you go. But what advice would you give to someone that was in the same position as you right now or mm -hmm. someone that was just starting out for example with Ryan Garbaloni as mm -hmm. well what bits of advice would you give them right now to help them to pursue their dreams and their mm -hmm. careers like I definitely think you've just got to do it like there's no point in in wondering oh what would have happened if I'd done this or if I'd done that like just do it and see what happens and if a gig goes bad it goes bad it's no the end of the world yeah and you just have to any gig you got offered do it doesn't matter if you're playing to two people or 200 people um, it's a lot of hard work and things are not just going to fall at your feet. You have to work for it. Like you need, you have to take time and play the rubbish gigs before you get yeah. bigger, better gigs. 
I mean, sometimes I think the weird gigs are better anyway. Yeah. Like, like just a wee audience. More intimate, aye. Aren't they? But um, just hard work and dedication is what it's all about. Like. Well, there you go. So if you are a young, aspiring singer-songwriter, whether you're a band, whether you're anything from a comedian to an actor, anybody that's trying to get into the arts, like what Jade's saying, like what I'm saying, like what Vince Kidd has said, and like what obviously Ryan is doing, push yourself. Give yourself that extra motivation to get to where your dream wants to be. It's like myself, I want to pursue within TV presenting, Jade with her singing, Ryan is a singer-songwriter, and Vince is obviously wanting to push himself a lot more. So stick in there, believe in yourself, and you can go anywhere. All right? Jade Richards, everybody. Thank you very much. And there we go. Right, we're here live with Vince Kidd, who's just come off stage in Kitties and Kirkcaldy, and uh, we're going to have a little interview. How was that on stage? That was fantastic. That was wicked. Um, you, Scottish, you Scottish people are crazy. We can't all say we're crazy, to be honest, uh, after your antics on holiday. This one's crazy. Me and, um, me and Ian go a long way back. Way back to our 1830s holiday. In, in Chavos. Very much so. Uh, yeah, well, to be fair, I was going to try and defend Chavos there, but uh, no, needless great. to say. It was great. Yeah. It was a wreck. It was messy. Messy week. It was. It was fun. It was fun. It was right. We've got a couple of questions for you anyway. Now, you were obviously on The Voice. Uh, how do you feel the experience was for you? It was cool. It was definitely different to what I was used to before the show I was like writing and playing gigs to help do the whole live TV thing you definitely have to adapt but it was something that I had to put myself out there and do I had to do something I had to get the platform I had to make the people listen to me so that was why I did it but yeah it was great working with some amazing people Jesse was incredible brilliant are you glad that Jesse picked you or did, would you have preferred one of the other judges well I picked Jesse. Basically, the way that it works is they have their chair turned away from you, and if they like the sound of your voice, then they will push, push a button, and then the chair will spin, and if you get all four coaches turned, then you get the pick out of all of them. So I got all four turned around, so it was really good. And I picked Jesse just because she's the best, in my opinion. She's the best one. I love her. There we go. Uh, what's next for you now then? Obviously the voice is now finished. Uh, you're in the studio, like you said, uh, doing a lot of uh, writing and stuff. What else have you got planned? I am finishing off the record. I'd say it's about, well, before the show, it was like pretty much like I had a record there, but I just want to make it as good as possible because the release will probably be, I think it's going to be next year early, singles this year. Thank you. <laughs> Yep, that's how we feed. This is how we feed people, honey. This is a little uh, tip. If you are losing your voice, which I have, I don't know if you can, if you can hear that. You just eat a shitload of manuka honey. Manuka honey. It has to be manuka honey. It's very expensive. It's really expensive, so I always make sure it's on the radar, along with some other stupid shit. I don't know what I'd be on my rider. I'd probably Jelly Babies or something, to be honest. What's the most ridiculous thing you've ever put on a rider, though? Or would you put on a rider? Uh, do you know what? I haven't actually put anything that ridiculous on a rider. Like, but we always, we still think, we're still thinking about what it is going to be. It's got to be, it's got to be absolutely ridiculous. To the point where people are like, is he, this boy is really weird. Like, what? Like, Why don't you try something like a micro pig? Yeah, that's not weird enough. <laughs> Come on, Ian, use your imagination. Well, we know what my imagination would create. Anyway, right, next up. Uh, what, what else did you do to get yourself noticed? Obviously, you got yourself onto The Voice and stuff, but what did you do previously to that uh, to push yourself to get out there more? Um, I was just making my own... Obviously, at the time before The Voice and stuff, I didn't have any money. So I was just making videos with no money. You know, just like good ideas and... You know, just, just making things happen, making music. You don't need money to make music. You don't need, you know, people, a lot of people when I was on The Voice said things like, oh, you know, how can he be on a show? He's already got videos and he's already got songs. And it's like, well, 
you don't need the label and you don't need money to do that. So I was just doing as much as I can, putting it out there and playing lots of gigs. Everything that you can do, all the steps that you can take to get yourself up there. Yeah. Trying to get on like support slots, supported Lana Del Rey, just stuff like that really. That's cool. I mean, I know you're an inspiration to a lot of people uh, that are getting themselves out there. And for me personally, knowing you from uh, a couple of years back when we first met, uh, seeing what you were like back then and how hard you were pushing yourself back then, it's an inspiration to a lot of people and you should be proud of that. And I know for the singer-songwriters and the bands uh, and the up-and-coming young acts that I'm going to be having appear on the show would take a lot of inspiration about what you do. So have you got any advice that you'd like to give to them? Yeah. I would just say, you know, the music industry is full of a lot of dickheads <laughs> and a lot of sharks. So I think you just have to be really confident in your vision and, you know, never lose your kind of your creativity and what you're about. Because um, you've got everyone telling you this is not good. This is, you know, everyone's got an opinion. So don't lose that and just, just go for it. Fully go for it. 100%. Put yourself out there. Don't be afraid of what people are going to say. Go for it. Just got to get a platform. That's why I did the TV show, because, you know, that could have gone horribly wrong. I could have been... I could have not gone through the first round, or everything could have gone wrong, but I took the risk. And, you know, it's paid off. It's paid off, so just take risks. Do what you want. And I'm all right, thanks. There we go. And there we go. That was a little interview with Vince Kidd. Now, make sure you stay tuned because we have got a lot more interviews coming your way. And as well, if you want to get any more from Vince Kidd, make sure you get onto his website and you can get him on Twitter and that as well. And make sure you follow him because, believe me, Vince is going to be one of the next greatest big things. Back to be in the studio. And that was Vince Kidd, as we caught up with him earlier this month at Kitties and Kirkcaldy, where he performed live. Now, that's the end of the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. We will be coming back to you live with more up-and-coming singer-songwriters, bands, acts, DJs, comedians, the lot, very, very soon. Make sure that you get us on one of our Twitter a Twitter links which will be shooting across the screen right now and you can also get us on YouTube and on Facebook as well. Thank you, good night. Yeah.